Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. It's been a while since I've made a tutorial. <laughs> I've just been really busy. Um, I've got the art gallery. I'm opening a school here in Barcelona. And I've got the web series. So I stay really busy. Not to mention the side projects I do. So why don't we just get started, guys? I'm going to show you today how to color correct footage inside Photoshop that you export from your NLE. I use Final Cut Pro, but you could use any NLE that you want. It could be Premiere, Media Express, etc. So why don't we get started? Inside of VLC, I have the footage I shot today on a GoPro loaded. I'll go ahead and press spacebar. I shot a time lapse. Now, you see me bump the tripod right there. Now, what I'm using is something called scene lapse. It sits underneath your GoPro and it allows it to pan like this over a preset determination of time. I'll leave a link inside the description of where you can find this awesome little device. If you have a GoPro and you shoot time lapses, they're really handy. Anyways, I'll stop this. I'll jump over here to my browser and you'll see I have cut out right here. This is one of the effects I applied inside Photoshop to the footage. I'll go ahead and go back to the browser, double click on oil paint and you'll see this other really cool effect I applied inside Photoshop to the footage and voila. So why don't I show you guys how I did that? I'm jumping over here to Final Cut Pro. I have in my timeline loaded the footage that I shot. I'll press spacebar. You'll see. The only thing that we're going to do inside Final Cut, or if you're using Premiere or some other program, is we are going to export an image sequence. This is only required for one of the two techniques I'm going to show you. Technically, you could use the footage as a whole in one of the techniques. But anyways, let's jump into exporting an image sequence. Go up here to your share button, click on it, scroll down. If you do not have export image sequence uh, shown here, scroll down and find add destination, click on it. Under add destination, you'll see image sequence, double click, it gets added and then you'll have it. So I'll go back to the, my share button, I'll scroll down, select import, uh, export image sequence. Here we want to name it, whatever we want to call it. Click on settings. The only thing that you may want to change is what type of file you're going to export. Now, TIFF, the highest quality image that you can export from Final Cut, it's the largest file size, etc. For this particular situation, we could have used JPEG uh, because we're stylizing the footage and the quality of the image is not as big of a deal. Now, if this was for pure color correction and et cetera, and I wasn't doing this type of effect, maybe you use TIFF for sure. I use TIFF, and the reason I use TIFF, I'm gonna go ahead and click Next. You select the folder that you wanna drop this to. You'll notice that all of these TIFF images, this is from the export that I've already done. The reason I use TIFF is because I got one of these new iMac Pros and I'm testing its speed constantly. This thing is so fast, it's no joke. It has 3K read-write times. <laughs> anyway, uh, a plug. I don't get anything if you buy one, but if you work in video, holy moly, they are amazing. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. I've already exported this and I'm gonna jump over into Photoshop, right? I'll press Command O on my keyboard to bring up the open dialog box. I'll then navigate to where I have the exported image sequence. Now, mind you, and edit it, that's already some exported video. But here, if I press spacebar, this is exactly what I exported from Final Cut. Now, I wanna select the first one, come down to options, and select image sequence. If I select more than one file here, you'll notice that image sequence goes away because it will open up multiple files if you do that. We just want to import this as one image sequence, so we'll select the first one, we'll click on image sequence, and we'll say open. When we do that, it asks us what frame rate did we uh, shoot this at. Well, I shot it at 25, but if you shot in 30, 50, 60, etc., or 29.97, you would set that information here. I'll go ahead and click on OK, and it loads it. It may not look like a video, but if you go up to Window and you select Timeline, you'll notice that here in the Timeline, it's a video. We can press Spacebar, and it will play it. You'll notice that it's caching a RAM, RAM preview. So in the beginning, it was playing at 25 because it had cached, and now it's doing 10 frames a second. And the reality is, if your computer is slower, it will go even slower than that. Mind you, we can affect each frame within this image sequence separately in Photoshop. But if we want to affect the entire image sequence, then we need to do this. 
go over to the layer palette, right click on the layer one, which is the video layer, and say convert to smart object. When we do that, any effects that we apply now to this smart object will apply to all of the images within the sequence. So let's go up here to filter, go to stylize and select oil paint. We can zoom out a little bit to see the image better, but really let's just click on preview and we see what's going on here. We can change these to whatever we want. If we want to change the scale, the cleanliness, the bristle detail, it doesn't matter. I've already exported this to show you what it looks like. I'll go ahead and click on OK. It's here. I do need to show you how to export this video. So there's two options down in the timeline window. There is a button here for exporting the, or rendering the video. Alternatively, you can go up to file, export and render video brings up the same dialog box in this dialog box you want to go ahead and click here to select your folder i already have one set you can name your file here the important thing to note is this under format of adobe media encoder if you wanted to set this as an image sequence you could do that as well but for our purposes we want a video if we are no longer going to affect this video and this is our final product, what's coming out of Photoshop, then we can leave this at H.264 and we can set high quality, etc. as we wish. And then that way, this is exported from here for use wherever we want, YouTube, sending to a friend, etc., etc. Now, if we are going to make further changes or import this back into Final Cut, then we'd want to switch this over to QuickTime and set it to the animation high quality preset. The reason for that is we want lossless encoding. We do not want our image to degrade in quality as we may be making further changes inside Photoshop. If we click on render right now, which I'm not going to do, it's going to go through and render this video. This only took a few minutes on my computer. However, it may take longer if you have a slower machine. I'm going to cancel out of this. Now you know how to apply the oil paint effect. Something important to note, if we come up to the history palette, I'll switch back over to open and I want to show you something. If I go up to filter, you'll notice that the filter gallery is grayed out. Another thing that's important to note, if I wanted to add different types of effects, like one of these here that I have for Photoshop, these effects would not apply doing this method. And the reason for that, I don't know, it just crashes every time I've attempted to do it this way. I've looked through the documentation with Adobe, I can't find it, and I don't have the patience to sit on the phone with someone who probably is gonna tell me they don't know either. <laughs> anyway, so there is a different way. Remember, we exported an image sequence, and in the technique I just showed you, we could have used video instead of an image sequence. But in the next step, because we broke that apart into images, we can affect those images through automation using an action, right? So I'll go ahead and I'm going to close this right here and I'm going to open up an image. I'll press command O and I'll select the first frame because I need a reference for the action to know what I'm planning to do, what actions, etc. We don't need the timeline window, but it's fine. I'll leave it there. I'll go over here to actions and I'm going to delete this cutout action that I have here because I'm going to show you how to create it from scratch. So you want to go ahead and click on this button here, which is to create a new action. When we do so, we can go ahead and name it. I'll name it cutout. We can make a color if we want, doesn't really matter. I'll click record. As soon as you start recording, what Photoshop is doing is it's remembering every action you take because you want to replicate these actions later in a batch process. So the first thing that we want to do in order to access the filter gallery is we need to go up to image, select mode and change this to an eight bits a channel image. If we do so, and before I say anything else, you'll notice over in the actions palette, it recorded that action to apply later. Now, if we go up to filter, you'll see in the filter gallery is now available. That's because it's an 8-bit image. If I click on this, let me try to resize this window. Boom. You'll notice that I can apply any of these different types of effects. You know, I applied the cutout, but technically we could apply angled stroke, ink outlines, sprayed strokes, you name it, whatever you want to apply, you can. And when you do so, it is recorded in your actions palette. Now, mind you, this isn't the cutout filter, but the purpose is showing you how to create this action. Next, we're going to go up here to file. 
and select save as we need to tell it to save i'm going to drop it here in the edited folder i think i have another folder in here i do called temp i'm going to scroll up a little bit and i'm going to save this as new uncheck layers select save so I say okay now my action is finished so I'll go ahead and click on stop here it stops the action and that action now can be sent as a batch I'm gonna close this image by pressing command W on my keyboard I'm gonna select don't save and now we are ready to run that action across all the images that we exported for the image sequence I'll click on file go to automate and select batch when I do that, the batch window comes up. Here I can select what action I want to run. Remember, we just recorded the cutout action, but if you had others, you would select that here. Where do we want the source to be? We can set this, the source to be here. These are all of the exports from Final Cut Pro X. When I exported the image sequence, this is this folder. I'll select choose. Next, we want to choose our destination folder. We would select here, we'd come, and you'll notice I've already exported them, right? Mind you, I used a different effect in this uh, example while I'm showing you, but they've already been exported. I'm not going to do it again. It took roughly 10 minutes to run this action, uh, which is 35 seconds of video, right? I think 875 uh, images next depending keep in mind depending on how many different filters you apply and especially if you're using third-party filters that open up other applications this could technically take hours and if the video is longer let's say the video was a two-minute video and you're running uh, HDR effects on it or something to that effect that could take hours so keep that in mind when you do this Next, the other option here is to set the naming convention for your file. Right now, I just have document uh, name plus extension. So it uses the current document name and puts the extension that it was, right? So it says GIF right here, but that's just an example. It's going to use TIFF because that's what the files are. Now, we're saving it to a different uh, destination folder than our source. So it doesn't matter that the file names will be the same. But if you saved it in the same folder, which I don't know why you do that, then you could add something else here. For example, we could set a four digit serial and then add the extension. I'm not gonna click on okay because what that will do is start exporting and running this batch on each individual image. Like I said, it was 875 images. I'm just gonna cancel this out and show you how to re-import that back inside of Final Cut Pro. Back inside Final Cut Pro, I'm going to remove the video that's in my timeline. I'm going to press Command I on my keyboard. When I do so, you'll notice right here, this is that affected footage, right? That I exported from Photoshop. I'm going to select the first frame. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to hold Shift on my keyboard and click the last frame. Next, I can leave this stuff in place. I don't need Create Optimized Media. I'm just going to select Import. This is gonna take a second, even on a fast machine. Now, if you have problems, if you have an older machine and your machine just dies right here, then what you should try to do, instead of importing 875 images, import 200, and then import 200 more, and then et cetera. If you start with a smaller amount of images, your machine should not choke. But if you have a faster machine, then try to import them all. If I had 2,000, I haven't tried it with 2,000 yet or 5,000 or 10,000 images, I would try it. This machine is a beast. So I imagine it would do fine. Over here inside my event library, you'll notice that right here is frame zero with the cutout filter applied. If I scroll down and I press shift on my keyboard to select the last one, I can then drag them here in my timeline. Notice my, my finger's still down on the mouse button and it doesn't even show them in the timeline. This puppy is hiccuping. I'm gonna let go now and it's okay. Now, if you had a slower machine, then obviously you may have to do this in smaller batches of clicking and dragging, etc. because this can be intensive. It may make your computer crash due to memory issues, etc. Now notice, all of the images within the timeline are selected still. This is great. I'm gonna press Control D as in dog on my keyboard. And when I do that, you'll notice over here, this changed to a duration uh, icon. I'm gonna press one on my keyboard and then press enter. 
And by selecting one, what I said is I want all of the clips that are highlighted change their duration to one frame. So now each of those images are one frame. And you'll notice we have a 35 second animation if I press spacebar playing back in real time. I'll go ahead and stop this. These are still all selected. If I wanted to add other effects, I could go ahead and right click on this, say new compound clip. We'll call this uh, image sequence. Hopefully I spell it right, right? <laughs> we'll call it image sequence and here it is. Now I can do things like add aged film, bad TV, etc. And this still has that cutout filter applied and I can remove or put whatever effects I want. I can change the do color correction here. You name it. Amazing. So guys, next, if we're happy with this, we would come up here, click on the share button, select master file, and we can then export this, right? I have mine to open them in uh, Adobe Media Coder so I can uh, compress them for YouTube, etc. But you may or may not use that option. Maybe use compressor, etc. Guys, I hope you like this tutorial. I'm a little out of practice on creating them, but I thought this one all right. I promise to sprinkle in some more tutorials. Please check out my web series, Video Therapy. It came about with me in an attempt to go sober. I've been spending my life in a hangover for the last few years and decided to do something about it. And creating this talk show has given me an outlet to focus on something and also consume a lot of my time. <laughs> Uh, and it's kept me not drinking. And now we're 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 on the seventh week. On Friday it will be week uh, seven complete. Anyways, guys, I hope you like this video. Tune in on Friday for video therapy episode number twenty. Till next time, I'm out.